Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor in Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the third session of the course that's professional communication for managers and session three is on verbal communication. So, dear learners, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that what's the basic concept of verbal communication as well as you will be able to classify verbal communication as oral and written and we'll be talking about its merits, demerits, where to use, which form of communication and all. Apart from this, you will be able to analyze the situations in which you should go on for which mode of verbal communication. Not just this, in fact, I have also planned and we will be discussing towards the end about how to give constructive feedback to your people. Also, I will be highlighting that how you can become an ethical communicator. So now, Let's begin towards the session which will start with the meaning of verbal communication. But before that, I just want to highlight one major aspect that no matter what you have done in your life or what you are doing in your life at present, your success will be determined 5% by your academic credentials. 15% by your professional experiences and now coming to the point that's 80% by your communication skills and trust me this is actually a really very valid fact that most of the time in most of the situations you people are being judged or somewhere you people tend to become more successful or less successful which depends on your communication skills. Communication is a very wide area. Now I just want to show you a picture and just want to make you people aware that why I am talking about good communication skills, verbal skills, non-verbal skills and so on. Now as you can see this figure you can see that Oral communication, listening skills, written communication and presentation skills. This is actually a figure which depicts that what are those 25 skills which employers tend to look in their employees. So it was a study which was being conducted by GMAC corporate recruitment survey which was being done in 2017 and see what we got the results that four communication skills which four things which fall into the category of communication skills that tends to come on the top that is the oral communication skills your listening skills your written as well as your presentation skills four out of five are the communication category skills so I hope now you are able to understand that if you want to become a professional if you are looking forward to become a manager you really need to take care of your communication skills. You really need to work upon that how to handle your communication skills and how to inculcate good communication skills. That all is being discussed in this subject. Moving further, I am going to talk about the typology of communication. Yes. Communication is divided into two parts that's verbal communication and non-verbal communication. First I'm going to talk about what we mean by verbal communication. Yes, verbal communication is majorly when we communicate, when we share, when we transfer our ideas, emotions, feelings through some language. 
Now when we do it by spoken language that becomes the oral communication and when we take the help of written language that becomes written communication. I will be going into the depth of verbal communication in the latest section of this session. But before that, I just want to tell you a brief idea of the another category of communication is nonverbal communication. Now, yes, nonverbal communication, when we communicate, when we transfer, share information, emotions, feelings, ideas, or anything else with the other person with some gestures, body language, facial expressions, eye contact, touch the kind of space we share with the other person, time, all such things tends to become the part of nonverbal communication. Now nonverbal communication is further categorized into kinesics, proxemics, haptics, chronemics, chromatics and paralanguage. See learners, I am not going to highlight these different parts of nonverbal communication here which I am going to take a separate session on this nonverbal communication. So I am skipping this part and I am moving towards more to talk about verbal communication in this session. Moving further, yes, what we mean by verbal communication? Most of the time the moment we say verbal communication people say oral communication. They say when we speak that becomes verbal communication. They are not wrong, but they are only telling the half story of the picture. They are not able to say it fully because when we talk about verbal communication, it is actually the use of language. I am emphasizing on this word that is the use of language to convey or transfer or share your feeling, your emotions, your ideas with the people around you. Now when I say language, that language can be spoken language or written language. And the moment we say that it is spoken language that becomes oral communication. And when we say written language, then it becomes written communication. So always remember whenever you are defining that what you mean by verbal communication. So verbal communication is simply the use of language. Language can be any. It is the use of language in order to express your ideas, thoughts, feelings, actions and so on. Yes, it includes both written language as well as oral language or spoken language. So this is how we can talk about verbal communication. Moving forward, I'll be focusing on oral communication. As few seconds back only, I said that oral communication is more about transferring, sharing, conveying your ideas, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts with spoken language. And when we say through spoken language, it includes conversation that I am conversing with the other person. I am talking to the other person. Now that talking conversation can be face to face conversation or it can be telephonic conversation. But yes, what I am taking help of? I am taking help of spoken language. I am taking help of words, sentences, phrases and I am speaking it. So that becomes the part of verbal communication. Now, if we take the examples, yes, as a manager or as a student, you might have attended some of the group discussions. When I say group discussions, you will be sitting with the other members of that group and you will be putting across your thoughts. You will be sharing your thoughts through language and particularly when I am saying language, here you are using the help of spoken language. Apart from this, yes, you tend to be the part of presentations and so on. And where one on one conversation is going on, these are all forms of oral communication, right? Now, as a manager, of course, you people are here to become managers. As a manager, you are going to be in different situations, in different scenarios, wherein you really need to have good oral communication skills. 
Now, what are going to be those situations where you will be using these oral communication skills? Now, you might be dealing with your customer face to face, you might be dealing with your employee, with your senior, therein you need to have face to face oral communication skills. See, learners, right now I am not talking about how you are going to say the things. What I am focusing upon is that what you are going to say and that too through words, through spoken language how you are going to say. Apart from this, yes, this is in fact one very um, special thing which you will be going for very soon because you will be going for the interviews wherein you want that you should be selected. So therein what you are going to speak, what words you will be using, what phrases you will be using. Again, I am saying I am not focusing on the how aspect, I am simply focusing on the what aspect that what you are going to speak which words you will be taking to articulate your ideas, your thoughts, that is going to be the deciding factor that whether you are going to crack the interview or you are not going to be selected. Again, another, other factors also affect, but yes, this is one of the major factors which tends to impact the interview, that how you are going to get success in the interview. Apart from this, yes, as a business manager, you will be continuously having telephonic conversations, either inviting certain guests to your organization or having a conversation with your customer or having a conversation with your suppliers, with your stakeholders. So therein, you really need to have good oral communication skills. Apart from this, grapevine. Remember what we mean by grapevine communication? That's informal way of communication, right? In the last session, we discussed about grapevine communication. So informal communication, wherein I am not talking about formal communication, which is linked with the employment terms. I'm talking about informal communication, wherein I am sharing my emotions, my feelings on the personal front with the people around me. So for that also, I really need to have good oral communication skills. I should know that how to articulate my ideas, my thoughts, my emotions. Many a times you people might have heard people saying, I don't have words. See, I am lacking or I am falling short of words. What does this signify? That the person is not having how to articulate or what words he or she should choose to put across the idea. Apart from this, as a manager, you will be into the negotiations, meetings, lectures, speech, conferences, and so on. So I hope, now it's clear in your mind that as a manager, you need to go on for serving different roles. And for those different roles, you really need to have good oral communication skills. Moving forward, I just want to tell you that how is oral communication helpful at workplace to you? Yes, when we talk about oral communication, one very important aspect is immediate feedback. I tell you something, you are going to give me feedback. That is face to face conversation is good about. And yes, when it is oral, when I'm saying it, you are giving me reply back and you are, I'm getting immediate feedback. So yes, that's one of the best way of doing communication because we are having a chance of getting immediate feedback from the receiver or again the cycle keeps on going. So that is one very good aspect when we talk about oral communication that we tend to get immediate feedback. The immediacy in the feedback is what makes this oral communication good. Not just this, in fact, the other point is very much linked with this, that's it is time saving. How oral communication is time saving? Can anyone guess? Yes, it is actually time saving because somewhere or the other, I am not going into the depth of bringing papers, writing the letters or spending my time in first articulating the thoughts, bringing it on the paper and then sending that paper to some other person 
and so on. It is going to be so much of time consuming. It is a good idea that I will just pick up a call, pick up my telephone and I will just make a call to that person and I will be having a conversation. See, it is going to have two advantages. That begins time saving. I am not spending lot of work, lot of time in articulating, writing my thoughts, sending someone to pass this message to the other person, then that person is writing again to me. No, if you are not having much of the time, that is the good idea that you should go on for oral communication because with this you will be getting immediate feedback also. Also, the third point is quite interesting, secrecy intact. Yes, how secrecy can be maintained through oral communication? Yes, it can be because whatever you want to speak, it is in your mind. You have not put it somewhere else. It is in your mind and until and unless it is not coming out of your mouth, that is secret, that is within you, that is with you only. No one can have a power over you and that person can take the words from your mouth. No, not at all. It is you only and you have stored the information in your mind and until and unless you are not going to speak, you are not going to bring it out, how it is going to come out. So yes, that is one, one very good point of oral communication that secrecy is maintained. Also, I am going to highlight less on pocket. That seems to be quite economical. Yes, of course it is. Are you paying anything to speak, right? But if you want to write, you need to have a pen. See, I'm talking about very basic things. You might feel like, Ki, oh, this is not that much costly. I completely agree. But still, but still you are going to incur some or the other cost when it comes to written communication or the other way, right? So in oral communication, you are not spending in that sense because you are speaking through your mouth. So that is why we do believe that it is less on pocket or, or it is economical in nature. Apart from this, when we talk about oral communication, one another very, very, very important aspect is that you tend to add an emotional or personal touch when you are communicating with the people through oral skills. I hope that is very clear. Do not go on to that particular fact that people tend to objectify uh, words a lot. See, I am not talking about that, but somewhere or the other, the moment I am meeting someone in person and communicating with that person through my oral skills, that seems to be more impactful. I can attach emotional touch, my personal touch to that communication, which is going to be missed when it is about written communication. Fine. So this is somewhere how we believe that yes, oral communication skills are really required to be possessed by a manager because it has these much benefits. But also I am going to tell you that where you can find that yes, oral communication might be little bit ineffective. The very first point is poor retention. Yes, I cannot memorize everything which is being shared with me. If, for example, you are working in an organization and there are 30 uh, odd rules and in the organization and your manager is just telling you through oral communication, do you really think that you will be able to retain each and every point word by word? No, that becomes a little bit difficult, right? So poor retention might be possible that you might retain it, but yes, it varies from person to person. And this is one very important aspect that just because of poor retention, we do not go on for preferring sharing the big information, large information with the people through oral communication. Apart from this, yes, you do not do have any records for that. Today I say something to you and next day I am denying, do you have any records? No. So always remember that when you are at workplace, there are many things for which you really need to maintain records. You cannot talk about going verbally. For example, your supplier, he agreed to you through oral communication that yes, he will be giving you some concession. But at the time when you were talking about clearing the bills, there was no concession you found. So somewhere or the other, you really need 
to look forward to it that if you want to have some kind of records then it is not a good idea to go for oral communication. Next in line yes it is time consuming you might be finding that few minutes back I said that it is time saving now I am saying it is time consuming I am contradicting myself no I am not contradicting myself yes it is time saving but at the same time when situation changes it tends to become time consuming also. See when you do not have the clear picture that for what you are meeting for what you are discussing it might end up into long hours discussion where you are not coming up with any good thing. So then in such cases where you do not have the clarity that for what reason you are going to discuss you do not have a plan you do not have an objective so therein it becomes time consuming. So that point you really need to look forward to it right apart from this misunderstanding yes because some people uh, they do not possess good non-verbal communication part so that is one aspect some people they do not know how to articulate the words then also they are being misunderstood so yes this is also a very uh, important negative aspect which makes oral communication ineffective. Uh, of course, as I have already discussed this point that it is actually unsuitable for lengthy messages. If you really want to go on for sharing lengthy information with your people, not only lengthy, I, I would suggest that if you want to share some information which has some technical things, sophisticated things, some something, some process in detail. I am not going to suggest you to go only for oral communication. Reason behind this is that if the information is too much sophisticated, too much technical, too much lengthy, then people might miss out some very important information and might take only the unimportant part of the information. So that is why I always tell uh, that you should never go on for preferring oral only oral communication yes you can go so you can support it with written but only oral communication is not good for lengthy messages for technical messages for sophisticated messages wherein long processes are going to be discussed some big change plans are going to be discussed and so on so that needs to be taken care of right Apart from this, yes, there is one more point wherein oral communication becomes somewhat ineffective that is lack of responsibility. As you can connect this point with the no records point because we are not able to maintain any records when it is about oral communication, right? So, when there are no records, so it is hard to assign responsibility you are not able to do that because somewhere or the other you do not have records you do not know from where information is coming and again you are not able to make people accountable or hold responsible for some or the other one. So see dear learners there are certain good aspects of oral communication but at the same time it does have some negative aspects which makes it ineffective. Now our role is to understand that how to use oral communication in the most effective and impactful way. That is what we need to take care of because that is the very important aspect of oral communication, right? So now I will be talking about written communication, yes. That is the another category of verbal communication. Remember I said verbal communication is it is the use of language for conveying your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings and so on and it is segregated into two aspects that is oral communication and written communication. When we use spoken language that becomes oral communication and when we take the help of written language it becomes written communication see it is written here written words. So yes when we talk about written communication at workplace 
see we are more concerned with the communication in relation to the workplace because that is what our course is all about professional communication for managers right. So, we are more concerned about that how you are going to use written communication during your stay at your corporate houses or why, why as a manager you need to have good written communication skills. Remember that survey which I discussed in the opening of this session, GMAC survey which was being done on uh, in uh, 2017. It also highlighted that you apart from having good oral communication skills, you also need to have written communication skills. That was on the fourth number out of 25 in the list that was on the fourth number that you need to have good written communication skills also. So, equally it is required and why it is required because as a manager you will be uh, in the role wherein you are going to write the memorandums or commonly we call them as memos which used to have some very important specific information about the business and you would like to share that brief information that brief message with your people. Now, when you need to make it brief you really need to take care that what words, what sentences, how you are going to articulate the things in the written form. So, memorandums you are going to prepare, you will be in the capacity of writing business letters wherein you will be either writing a sales letter which is reaching to the, your customers, highlighting the benefits of the products or the services which you want to share or you will be writing letters to your seniors, it can be a resignation letter, sorry I am starting with a negative term, it can be a resignation letter, it can be a thank you letter, it can be a, it can be any letter, right, uh, some complaining letter and also might be you are into the capacity wherein you need to write letters to your competitors, you are required to write letters to your suppliers, to your stakeholders, to your investors and so therein you really need to know that how and what words you will be writing, in which form you will be writing, that is going to create a good impact on the receiver end, fine. So, this is how as a manager you will be writing memorandums, you will be into the capacity of writing letters, not just this, in fact you are going to present certain reports, it can be business reports, academic reports because as a student if I talk about present time, you are required to make certain types of academic reports. So, you also need to know that how and what is the format of the report, how we put the things in a jumbled way. Similarly, when you will be going in the corporate houses, you really need to understand that how to put the things across, how to write the things, fine. Also, you will be preparing notices for meetings, minutes of the meetings, some kind of circulars will be there, also manuals or handbooks, company handbooks you need to prepare. So, see my point of conversation out here to tell all these roles is that you really need to understand that you should be good at writing as well. You completely understood you are good at speaking but at the same time you really are going to perform certain roles which requires brilliant writing skills, right? Now, I will be talking about that why, again the why, that why you need to have good writing skills. So, Yes, when we talk about at workplace, written communication is one way by which you can have wide access coverage. Take an example, there is some change in the rules, regulations or policies of your company and in some 30 odd rules there are certain minute changes, fine and you want to communicate these changes to your people and in your organization there are 10,000 plus employees working. Now, if you are going to make a call to each and every person, do you really think that it will be able to cover n number of people? No, 
that becomes a difficult job for you. If you want to have wide access, wide coverage, you can just drop an email to each and every person and it will be spread within, within fraction of seconds. Similarly, you can take the example of uh, going uh, or sending emails or sales letters to your potential customers, fine. Uh, I'm not talking about your customers, I'm talking about your potential customers. So wide access coverage is there through written communication, which you might be lacking. See, I'm not degrading oral communication here. I'm simply saying that when we talk in context of wide access coverage, yes, written communication is more suitable in comparison to oral communication, fine. Moving forward, lengthy message, I hope now you are able to connect my words. In the oral communication part, I was talking about that you should try avoid going for only oral communication when it is about sharing lengthy messages. But yes, written communication is a nice idea when it is about sharing large information, lengthy information with your people because that is going to help them in retaining the information more in comparison to the oral communication skills. Also in line, uh, yes, permanent record is maintained. Yes, when it is written, when it is in the written form, you can go back to that particular document, you can go back to that particular file and you can have an access that from where this particular information came because you have records. If it is written, it is recorded, but as I said, when it is oral communication, things cannot be recorded, but here that's the advantage that yes, you can record the things. So that's a wonderful idea. If you really want to record things, you need to go on for written communication. If some of your manager is telling you that in coming month, he or she is going to promote you, better taken in written form. Uh, I, I understand that that becomes a bit difficult to, for asking these kind of things, but uh, somewhere or the other, you really need to have all such things in the written form. Otherwise, you might not be having any record or how you'll be going and asking, oh, you told me that yes, that needs to be done, but now you are not doing it. There's no record. Why should I do? So yes, that's one thing for permanent record, you go, should go for written communication. And just because I said permanent record, it is very much connected with the other point, that's the legal evidence. When it is in the written form, we do have legal evidence, right? In fact, when we talk about the rules, regulations or the reports, the auditor's report, all such things, they are actually the things which can be used for certain legal purposes as well. So yes, when it is about written communication, that helps us in having certain legal evidences with the company regarding the employment of the people, of uh, different things around them, right? Of course, linked with the employment only. Apart from this, yes, when things are in the written form, you can fix responsibility. For example, if there are four people in a team, and I have very clearly mentioned that a person needs to look after this, B person needs to look after this and so on. I can fix the responsibility. Now no more I am in confusion or I am in ambiguous situation that who was responsible for which work. I can go back to that document, I can see that yes, which person was being assigned what work. I can go on for making them accountable, right? Yes, it is more accurate way of communication. See, when we, when we talk about written communication, uh, we look forward and we become more conscious while writing the facts and the figures. When it is oral communication, people tend to manipulate, but when it is going to be written communication, they avoid manipulation. Research says they avoid manipulation because they know that they can be caught because it is going to be recorded. So that's why we believe that written communication is more accurate form of communication, right? So these are some of the points which makes written communication more effective, more impactful over oral communication. 
Now, moving forward, I will be talking about the demerits of written communication that why uh, written communication should be avoided on, and, and in which situations it is not good. Yes, it is time consuming. I hope now you can relate time consuming. Why time consuming? First, I am drafting the message, then I am sending that message, then the receiver is receiving the message. I do not know at what time he or she is going to receive, then that person will be writing. So, a lot of time is being consumed. I just wanted to share one simple information that I am on leave today, for example, that is going to take n number of days because first I will be writing, I will be sending, might be possible he is not in the office or he is not available, so he will not be able to see or he might forget to read that particular document, then he will be sending a reply back to me and if that reply is not positive, then again I will be writing to him, lot of time is being consumed, better I should give a call or I should knock on his uh, cabin directly and have a conversation because that was a very simple thing to do. So, yes, it is time consuming. Although you need to know that in which situations it can be good as well. Costly, yes, cost is being incurred, somewhat cost is there because technology cost, whatever cost you say that technology cost, paper cost, pen cost, eraser cost and so on, that much cost is being incurred. When something is written, so yes, it can be shared with anyone around you. So, lack of secrecy is one point wherein we believe that uh, written communication certain times have certain loopholes. Apart from that, as I said time consuming, so you can relate the point delayed feedback with time consuming. I will tell you how. Delayed feedback is that as I said, I send the notice, I send the message in the written form to the person, then whenever he will be receiving, he is not at the desk or he forgot to um, somewhere uh, read that particular message. So, delayed feedback I am getting and then he is denying me back then again. So, see it is delayed feedback, I am not able to get immediate feedback. So, that is one very important aspect when it comes to written communication and which makes it somewhat ineffective over oral communication. Apart from this impersonal, yes, somewhere or the other when we talk about written communication, it is somewhat impersonal in nature because therein you are not there, right and uh, you are not able to express your words through your gestures, through your facial expressions, through your eye contact. So, that is why it becomes a little bit impersonal in nature. Also, when we talk about the demerits, rigidity, it is good also, it is bad also. But just because, because uh, certain times you really need to have somewhat flexibility, but if a rule is in the written form that it should not be done then you cannot change it. So, that is why we believe that it is somewhat rigid in nature, it cannot be changed easily. So, dear learners, I hope you are able to understand that how oral communication is different from written communication. And also one important aspect which most of the time people tend to commit this error that they believe that verbal communication is oral communication only. So, no, it is not that verbal communication is oral communication as well as written communication. Now, moving forward, I will be talking about that what are the factors which impact your choice that which method of communication whether oral or written you are going to select. So, yes, there are certain factors because as in just now we discussed about the merits and the demerits, where oral communication is good, where it is not good, where written is good. So, if I talk about that both the things that is oral as well as written, they are good into certain aspects, they are not effective into certain aspects. So, as a manager, you need to take a call that in which situation, which method you will be taking care of. So, the very first factor is about speed. Now, if speed is the concern, right, you not want to 
discuss an issue at that moment only you cannot wait then i would suggest you to go on for oral communication because that something something very urgent uh, you need to discuss it cannot wait so if you might be writing in the written form and sending that information the person the receiver might not be receiving it on time might not be responding it on time it can be anything so yes if you want to go on for speed it should be oral communication not the written one but now think from the other perspective in the speed only i'm talking about you want to cover or you want to share a piece of information with thousands of people right and here if you are going to share that information with thousands of people and you want that information should be shared immediately so you need to think of that which mode you will be going for it can be oral right you if you are taking television medium or something like that widespread coverage kind of thing or it can be an email which is sent to the people who are involved with that information that's why i'm saying as per the situation you need to use your cognition that which method is going to be good right i have told you the two different stories if you want some accurate information to be shared proper facts figures all the data intact i am going to suggest you to go for written communication because as we discussed that written communication is more accurate because people while drafting a written message they are more careful they are more conscious because they know that it is going to be recorded so if you want to go on for more accurate information i am going to suggest you to go for written communication right moving further impression what kind of impression you are talking about here you only want to go on for formal impression or you would like to add some personal touch some emotional aspect so that's how you need to go for it fine so if you really i am looking forward to put as put some emotional uh, impression on the other person some personal impression i am going to suggest you that you should go for oral communication rather than the written communication apart from this another factor is economy see we discussed this topic this point right when i was talking about demerit and merits of oral and written fine it is economical to go for oral communication when you are simply using your mouth and no technology is required right but when we go into the written communication somewhat material certain resources are required then yes it becomes somewhat uh, more costly right distance you want to share the information with the people who are not near by you now here also you need to look forward that what's your coverage will you be able to go on for some kind of arrangement of zoom meetings and on virtual meetings kind of thing if yes that's the way out possible then yes you can go on for going for oral communication but if that's not possible you need to look forward for the written communication part because people are distant to you they are not near by you so that's what you need to take care that what are the constraints present in that situation as per the constraints you need to decide your way of communication right moving forward is the urgency as i said that if it is urgent right now only you want to share then preferred idea is that you should go on for oral communication rather than the written communication so see managers as why i am calling you managers because soon you people are going to become the managers only so my dear budding managers now here you need to use your cognition that in which situation you are because we cannot say that oral is good or written communication is good which communication oral or written communication is good or bad no there is no straight answer to this particular question you are going to face the situations and as per the constraints as per the demerits and the merits which i discussed in this session you need to base your decision accordingly and that's how you will be able to choose the right way of communicating with people around you now i will be moving forward wherein i'll be talking about 
how to offer constructive feedback. But before that, I just want to remind you one thing what we discussed in the process sender send encodes the message then through some medium or channel it is being received by the receiver and then it is being decoded fine and then I said you need to give feedback. This was the process. I hope all of you remember. So, feedback is the response of an audience to a message or the activity. I hope you can see that it is the response of the audience or the receiver you can say. Yes, feedback can be conveyed verbally as well as non-verbally. I asked you that whether you are able to understand this concept and you said so what's this this is a non-verbal feedback wherein you are just nodding your head or it might be you are saying yes we got it so that becomes the verbal aspect of the feedback so it can be verbally given it can be non-verbally given right but in situations you need to really understand that Feedback can be constructive, it can be destructive. Although we are more looking forward to giving and taking and receiving and passing on the constructive feedback, right? So constructive feedback talks about constructive criticism. Yes, you might be wondering that I'm using a negative term, that's criticism. So it's okay because I am talking about constructive criticism wherein I am critically analyzing that particular information. So, it is not a negative term, right? Focuses on the process as well as the outcomes of communication, not on people involved. That is very, very important aspect, learners. Most of the time, we base our feedback on the people who have shared that information and that becomes the destructive feedback because we are not focusing on the information, we are focusing on the person who is sharing that information. So, that becomes the negative feedback or the destructive feedback. You can see personal criticism with no effort to improve, stimulate improvement. What's that? What my feedback is about? My feedback is about you as a person, not the information which you are sharing, which is actually wrong, which is destructive way of giving feedback. So, feedback is very, very important aspect. And if you are moving on the negative side, giving destructive feedback, then of course you are ruining the communication message. There is no point in communication then, fine. So how you can become a manager who can provide constructive feedback? Always remember to provide your feedback on time. Today you received some information and after a week's time or a month's time, you are sharing that some feedback that I am not getting that information or what uh, meant into that information, what is that? It should be well timed and now you are telling, for example, you just uh, receive uh, an information that your worker is performing like this and after a month's time you are telling him that how to improve, sorry, this is not the right way, it is not at all timely. Also, you should give sufficient time to implement the feedback to your people, right? They should be able to implement it, it is not okay, uh, your subordinate is bringing 100 pages report and you are uh, giving him some kind of feedback to bring I mean, changes in that report and you are asking him to get it done in next 15 minutes. Sorry, if the changes are huge in that report and if you are expecting that it should be done in next 15 minutes, sorry, you are not on the right track. You should give enough time to incorporate those changes, right? Keeping personal biases away, never go on for giving feedback to an individual, you should always give feedback to his acts or whatever information he or she is sharing. Be concise, be specific, do not elaborate, do not move here and there. Majorly, I would suggest that go for the direct approach, right? Rather than roaming around here and there, you should go on for following a direct approach, right? 
discuss improvements rather than flaws as I said that you should not focus on the individual, you should focus on his deeds, on his actions, on his message, right? Verify understanding, this is also important. You are making full efforts to give feedback, but the other person is not understanding your feedback, then what's the point? You yourself is wasting your time as well as the other person's time. So always remember to verify that the other person is getting the feedback or not. Is he able to understand your feedback? Is he able to incorporate the things which you want to? So that's how you should go on for. And yes, you should always bear the right attitude. Right attitude is about having appropriate gesture for sorting out the things. So this is how you can provide constructive feedback to your people, right? Now, moving forward to another important aspect, which is the last topic in this session, that's what is ethical communication. But before that, I am going to talk about the ethics, which are defined as the accepted principles of conduct that govern the behavior within a society. That is what is ethics is. Yes, when we talk about ethical communication, it refers to communicating in a manner that is clear, concise, truthful, responsible. So as a manager, if I'm saying that you need to go on for ethical communication, you need to know that how that message can be more concise, how you can be more responsible, how you can transfer your message in the more truthful manner. That is all about ethical communication, right? So all information shared is true in every sense and is not at all deceptive. Why I'm saying this? Because as a manager, you'll be dealing with your customers, your stakeholders, your suppliers, government. So if you are deceiving them, if you're not sharing the right information with your investors, with your shareholders, you are not on the ethical communication ground. You're not an ethical communicator. So you need to look forward to that. Now, I'll just quickly tell you that how people end up being unethical or doing unethical communication. One is plagiarism. Plagiarism is copying another person's idea and presenting it as yours. And yes, it tends to violate copyright rule, which is not correct, which is not ethical. So as a manager, you really need to be very, very sure of this, that you should not commit plagiarism mistake, right? Also, many a times what happens is that the manager, he tends to leave important information. I'll tell you how. Now you are uh, into some real estate business, fine, and you are making some housing complexes uh, in a society. And in that particular area, in that land, there is something negative, negative in terms of few years back, it was a land where in a uh, lot of ammunition and all such things were being buried. So it is into constant danger, fine. I completely understand that presently it is fine, but it is into constant danger due to X, Y, Z reason. And if you are hiding this information while selling the houses out there, then you are not an ethical communicator. You are not, fine. So apart from this purposeful selective misquoting, purposefully you are manipulating the facts to get your business. That is incorrect gesture. Apart from this misrepresentation of numbers that is exaggerating or uh, lowering down the facts and figures in order to get more benefits from the customers or the competitors or somehow people around you. So that is also not the skill of an ethical communicator, distorting the visuals, the graphs, the charts which you want to show to your stakeholders, to your investors and you are either exaggerating the figures and telling good graphs through which they can go on for taking up the uh, taking or investing in your products or services that's not ethical right last but not the least one that is failing to respect privacy failing to respect privacy of the people people in terms it can be your customer it can be your uh, suppliers, it can be your employees or so on. For example, I just want to quote one thing. If we talk about medical profession, right? We do have Medical Council of India and there is a set of conduct when we talk about Medical Council of India. They used to 
state certain code of conduct for the doctors and one code of conduct says that as a doctor you cannot share the details of your patient what illness that person is having or any xyz information of that patient with anyone without the consent of that patient fine so what's that that somewhere you should never go on for sharing the details or entering the other person's privacy so as a manager also you need to know that where you are entering other person's privacy you should not do that right so these are that ways why i have told you these ways because this is going to give you a very clear picture in your mind that how you can make yourself away from becoming an unethical communicator with this i also want to tell you about two terms that's you might have come across that's an ethical dilemma an ethical lapse ethical dilemma is a choice between alternatives that may all be ethical and valid basically ethical dilemma is a situation wherein i don't i'm not able to come up with a very white or a black kind of a thing there's a gray area that seems to be correct also valid also incorrect also but at the same time it is fine fine so ethical dilemma situation is this wherein you are into a continuous uh, confusion state you are not able to understand that this is also good this is also right but there is some gray area whereas if i talk about an ethical lapse an ethical lapse is making a choice that you know to be unethical you know that you are going and adopting an unethical choice and still you are doing it so that is an ethical lapse that is the difference people go for ethical lapse and they say that oh i was into the ethical dilemma situation no it's not that it's purposefully you have chosen that particular track so that is about the terminology the last topic of this is how to ensure ethical communication right how are you going to ensure that you are an ethical communicator at your workplace so always remember that if you are ensuring transparency openness at workplace you are completing your assignments by being truthful by being more responsible you are an ethical communicator right apart from this if you are using appropriate language right uh facts right figures everything then you become an ethical communicator if you are not judging people based on your perception your stereotyping and all such things then you are an ethical communicator if i'm not basing my decision based on the old traditions or old beliefs or stereotypes then i am an ethical communicator right yes considering receivers preferred communication channels that is also which makes you an ethical communicator if i know that uh, my audience is illiterate and they cannot read fine and still i am providing them with handouts which are in written the information in the written form i am communicating the information in the written form what's the point what's the point that means i am not an ethical communicator because i am not taking care of the preferred choices which my people want or which my audience are going to look forward to so this is how somewhere you are not ensuring ethical communication of course if you are respecting the privacy as well as the confidentiality of the information of your people it can be your employees it can be your suppliers stakeholders you are an ethical communicator or you can become an ethical communicator also the last point choosing right place and time to speak you should know that at which place you should speak what information if you are sharing some confidential information with some of the competitors of your organization does it make you uh, an ethical communicator no you are not an ethical communicator because you are sharing the information the confidential information of your company in front of your competitors that's a wrong idea so dear learners i hope you are able to understand that how you can become an ethical communicator because that's very much required for the organizations so 
Dear learners, in this session I have discussed about the basic meaning of verbal communication as well as its classification. Also I discussed about that in which situations you can go on for taking up oral communication or written communication. Towards the end I highlighted that how you can give constructive feedback because feedback is one very 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 important aspect of the communication process. Also how to become ethical communicator. I hope you are going to instill all these strategies which I discussed to become an ethical communicator in you as a manager and as a manager you will be the most ethical communicator at your workplace. Thank you and happy learning.